what is up everyone so I got another automotive vlog for you today so in today's episode I will be working on my buddy Enrique's car and you might remember Enrique from my activity vlogs uh, where we go golfing so I'm gonna be working on his car today we're gonna be doing a fuel filter uh, he's got a Lexus IS300 now mixed reviews on when you should actually be doing the fuel filter if you should be, even be doing the fuel filter and I don't know it's in the tank but, I mean, the good thing is we don't have to drop the tank. We just have to take out the back seats and then replace the fuel filter that way. So, I mean, I was reading online on a link that he sent me, actually. And some people were saying it had to be done at 75,000 miles. Some people were saying it doesn't have to be serviced since it's an in-tank filter. And I have no idea. We're just going to go ahead and do it. Why not? He's got, I believe he's got over 100,000 miles on it anyway. So, whatever. We'll go in and check it out see what we can make happen, right? I mean, other than that, it should be... I don't even know what to expect. Never done one on that. On a, on a Lexus, so it's definitely not your typical little round metal canister type fuel filter, so oh, oh well, we'll figure it out. I know we'll figure it out. So without further ado, let's go ahead and let's start working on this thing and let's see what we can make happen, right? Alright, so apparently if you just lift up on the seats, they pop right into place. There we go. Already popped the other side off, so now make sure that you take your seatbelt thing off and you can take the bottom cushion. I'm gonna see if I can do this. I can't do this. One handed. Okay, we're gonna lift this up and that should be it right there. Awesome. So I'm move this out of the way, we're gonna go on the other side of the door and then we're gonna work on getting this thing done. All right, so this is, this is where the fuel tank is right here. So this is the connector for the fuel pump and naturally he's got 75 cents that are found here. He's got a golf tee and a whole bunch of snacks. We're just gonna take what we really want. And we're just gonna take the 75 cents. Is that pencil lead? You got pencil lead in here too? That's weird. What a weird thing to have. Okay, anyways, back to it. So right here, these are 10 millimeter bolts. We're just gonna use our impact wrench here. We're just gonna squeeze. Get off. Okay. Let's go ahead and let's see if we can lift this cover. It's got a seal on it naturally. Perfect, and that is the fuel tank right there. So we got a connector. Pull the tab on top. Or not. That was actually a really strong clip right there. I had to get some pliers. But essentially what you do is you push this in and this comes out. So now we have this whole thing out of the way so it's not gonna bother us. Uh, we have this one cable right here. I'm not sure what that's for. That one's got to be for the, uh... Oh god, it escapes me right now. Anyways, um, so we have our, our cover right here. Uh, looks like it's got a couple little other bolts. You can either use a Phillips head screwdriver or maybe they're 8 millimeters. I don't know. So anyways, first of all, what I'm going to do is I'm going to clean this all up because I don't want any of that dust getting in there. And, uh, yeah, and contaminating the gas. So we're going to go ahead, we're going to get that cleaned up, we're going to remove the cover, and then we're going to continue on with what we have to get done. All right, so as you can see right here, I just vacuumed out the area, and then I uh, just took a damp cloth and wiped everything down. So in order to remove this line, okay, so I think I, I think this goes to the charcoal canister. It might be a vent line, but I'm not sure. Don't quote me on that. That's just a guess. But either way, all we got to do is we're going to pull these clips off to the side here. Okay. Going to work them out, and then we're going to pull this back. And we should be able to pop this line off. It should just be a retaining clip here. Oh, now we have to push this guy in. There we go. You can just use a little screwdriver for this. Oh, dang. Well, looks like we just lost that clip. Okay, it's fine. We'll find it. All right, so we ended up removing the, the line here. So that is actually the just the, uh, the fuel line, the delivery line. So now that we got that removed, let's go ahead and start removing our screws here that keep the cap on. And these are little eight millimeters. All right, so I've taken out the uh, little fuel pump unit here, the whole assembly. Uh, and as you can see, there's one line still attached. It's a rubber hose. It's inside the fuel tank. And of course, he delivered it to me with a full tank of gas. So anyways, we're just going to remove this clip here. Uh, we're going to remove the hose, and then we're going to take it to the bench, and then we're going to start taking it apart, and then putting it back together with the uh, new part. So let's go ahead and let's do that. All right, so on the left, you can see I have the new part right here. So the filter is actually located in this portion right in here, and it looks like a little sock filter or something like that. You can kind of see it. 
there you can see a couple of little windings so it looks like here's the old one here so it looks like if we just pop off these tabs here and start taking it off we can take it off as an assembly so I'm gonna go ahead and do that now I don't have a way to hold the camera so I'm just gonna do it off camera now there is a connector there that I hmm, well maybe this one I'll have to replace that connector just when I bring this this casing off but other than that it looks like it's just gonna be a whole bunch of clips everything's just kinda clipped on so I'll be going ahead I'll be doing that and I'll show you right now what the finished product looks like and then we'll be putting it back in the car alright so this is what the finished product looks like right here put it all back together so there is an o-ring that goes down to this tube right here and there's also an o-ring you can't see it now but in between that connector there's like a little um, tube a little round thing right there that also had an o-ring on it and those are the only two oh and this little regulator right here that had an o-ring on it those are the only items that had an o-ring but everything else went back together pretty smoothly so now we're ready to go ahead and put it back in all right let's go ahead and do that all right, so just to let you guys know, I did find that clip that we lost earlier, that launched earlier. So we're going to take care of this, and uh, just be wary. It will launch. We know that now. Okay, so here's my unit. Okay, so over here I have that hose that I had to disconnect. That hose goes onto this little barb right here, this little nipple right here. We're going to go ahead and put that guy in there, because it's going to have to go in as a unit. Actually, it might be easier. I'm going to put the float in there, and now I'm going to slip that guy on. Grab some pliers, just some channel locks. Any pliers will do actually. Slip that guy back on. And now we're gonna start sliding the unit in. Now just so you know, oh, there is an O-ring right here, and that's gonna seat or mate down to the uh, top of the gas tank there. And there we go. So we got that. Now I actually need to go grab the ring and put the ring back on there and that's going to hold it all down in place and then we should be good to go. We'll start it, turn it on, see, make sure it works and then uh, it should work. So let me go grab that top ring and then we'll go ahead and install that. Alright, so I got my top ring back on and it lines up. You got two little dowel marks right here. You put the lid back on. I don't know if you guys can see that. But anyways, these little screws. So you want to start these on by hand first. These are really tiny and they're... It's a pretty fine thread, so you don't want to strip these guys out. You want to start them off by hand, and then you don't want to use an impact wrench to tighten them all the way down. So I'm going to go ahead, put these all on, one by one. I don't know, there's probably like 10 on this thing. Alright, so I'm just going to use my driver to tighten these up. I've already hand tightened them, or put them on there. I'm only going to put it on probably the second setting, because like I said, you don't want to over torque these. And we're going to use a cross pattern. Start with that one first. That one. All right, finish hand tightening. Now I'm gonna use a ratchet. Now I'm gonna use a little quarter inch ratchet. Don't, it doesn't have a lot of leverage because you don't want to over tighten these. But remember, you still want to close the seal. Okay, gonna use the same star formation. All right, so I'm actually just gonna cycle the key maybe two or three times, trying to get the, the fuel pump to prime. Okay, and then we're gonna go ahead and start it. Okay. Try and prime the pump again. Okay, let's give it another shot. All right guys, so this was a lesson learned the hard way. And I, I mainly blame my buddy Enrique for this. So for mm, mess with this for about another 20 minutes, car would not turn on. It spins, I hear the fuel pump going and the car would not turn on. So this is what happened. His key is broken. And I did not know that this actual key portion here has to be touching the actual key that's in the ignition. So it worked the whole time. So I had to call him up and, and just randomly ask him because I was curious and that's how I ended up figuring it out. So uh, it's on, there is a check engine light on, but that is uh, for another issue. It's non-fuel related, does not have anything to do with the fuel filter. So I'm gonna continue being upset with him right now. Uh, other than that, I just gotta put the back seat portion back in and I'm going to show you that real quick actually. That's actually a really quick part. But other than that, it's on, turns on, it's working. So could it be more stoked? It probably took maybe Without the little hiccup, it took probably about, I don't know, maybe 45 minutes. It actually didn't even take that long. I spent more time 
standing around doing nothing than I did actually doing this. So let me go show you how to put the seat back in and then we're just pretty much gonna call it a day on this project. So let's go back and let's do that. All right, so we put our seatbelt buckles right back through. Over here, there's some hooks. These guys have to go behind the seats back here. Let me see if I can do this one-handed. There we go. And if you look down here, I don't know if you'll be able to see, but you have these hooks that go into these little slots there. All you do, make sure they're aligned. Push it down, there's one, and there's two. And that's how you put it back together, nice and easy. Make sure you pull the buckles right back up. There you go, close it, now it's time for a test drive. All right, you guys, just finishing up test driving the car. Everything's running good, uh, not seeing any issues, you know, due to what we had to work on, so that's good. Uh, other than that, probably gonna have to leave the windows down for a little bit just to get the, the fuel smell out but I mean it's pretty easy it can be done within an hour and I mean it's not too overly difficult so you know hopefully this video helps you guys out if that's something this is something that you guys are looking into doing um, you know you it can be done at home you know just a couple basic tools it's nothing too bad you know hopefully I was able to actually show you you know what needed to be done uh, I know I didn't show you the actual breakdown when I uh, removed the filter portion from the um, float the level or from the floor flow portion on top, I guess. I don't know what you'd call that, the two pieces. Uh, anyways, you know, hopefully uh, this video helps. Uh, if you have any questions, any comments or anything, you know, let me know. Maybe I can help you guys out any further than you know if you guys need it. Other than that, this, this has been uh, another automotive vlog and, you know, hope to catch you guys in another episode. Just uh, whatever you do, go out there, have fun, you know, enjoy it. All right, talk to you guys in another video. Bye.